and welcome to Riverside Crafts today. Um, I'm Ray, um, one of the tutors there, and today we're going to be looking at doing this stamp topper um, using a Creative Expression stamp from the Designer Boutique, and it's called Doodle Elephant. Um, it's going to be I'm colouring with alcohol markers, and I'll explain how I do that. So let's get to stamping first. Right, stamping, here we go. The cardstock I'm using is Nina Solar White, which is a super good smooth cardstock, which you need to use when you're using alcohol markers. As you can see, on my ink, I've written down the, the uh, alcohol markers that I'm going to be using. More so that I remember, this is the ink I need to use when I'm doing stamping with it, because if I use stays on, I'm going to end up with a muddy picture. I need to use a dye-based ink for stamping if I'm colouring with alcohol markers. So, stamping. I'm using my stamp platform. Um, and you can hear, I'm tapping the ink onto my elephant, giving them a nice coat of ink. Now, if I don't get this right the first time, then I can do it again. Because one of the really good things about having a stamp platform is that you can put it back down in exactly the same place but have a look at that look at how beautifully that stamps that was so easy and it's such a beautiful image right so i'm just going to put him out of the way because i'm going to use the platform again in a bit so i'm just going to put him out of the way so i don't lose him right here we go here is the color let's have a look where we're we going now we're going to start off with some greys now I'm using pen markers today um, you can be using spectrum bars which is what we're having in the shop at the moment and they're really good these ones um, I can't use these today because they're at my daughter's house um, the majority of them so today I am doing the ones I've got but all all alcohol markers doesn't matter their make um, and how they are will work together so you can use all sorts of them together I'm just going to start with my grey and I'm going to put my grey in my lightest colour is going in first okay so I'm just putting some grey down just to get my elephant a little bit of a thing and as you can see I'm doing like small circles and going round in a circle fashion and I'm just sort of laying down colour over all of my elephant okay so I'm not really doing anything amazing at this moment in time I'm just putting color down okay one of the things you'll notice about alcohol markers is you don't get that line in between coats when you start when you use cold tips if you go over the top of it it darkens and you can physically see the change in the color um, that you get on the ink um, and you can't get rid of it you don't get that with alcohol markers you get this beautiful um, feels like it's been printed if you um, if you like um, without any marks between it and the ink so you get you don't get those sort of massive color bits in between each thing so it's quite good that way Right, I'm hoping we're bromelin free today. Um, oh, um, if you write down what it is you want to know um, and put it in the comments, I will answer them at the end. Um, quite happy to go back over things and answer them. I just can't do it while I'm concentrating on what I'm doing, otherwise I end up in a pickle. Right, now I'm going to put some darker grey down so that I can give him a little bit of a, a sense of shape. Um, a shadow, so I'm just putting down some colour. I think there might be some shadows from what the bits marked on him. Using the guides that they've put in place to help me work out where shadow might be. So I'm just sort of having a look to see where it all looks like it might be on the elephant and putting it in. So I'm just looking for some areas that where. You think, oh, that's definitely going to be darker in there because I've got something underneath it, so it's going to be a shadow. Okay, then I'm going to put the, the darkest colour I'm going to use in, and that's just 
and I do less each time I'm putting less ink of the colors down so I'm just giving it a little bit just to help give it that color but I'm also doing it so that I'm not getting lots and lots of dark color everywhere because it doesn't really work if I do it that way so I'm just going to put a little bit in the end of these to help not the dark drag up there that's good put it under there I think on that one down here just put a little line under those so they've got this I've got a bit of right back in with my playlist and I'm going to go all over it um, so this will blend in the colours I've just put down and take away those lines I've got because I don't want to see those lines so I'm just going to blend it all in so we've not got those lines and differentiations between the colours so it just sort of blends effortlessly between one shade and the next which it will do quite happily and help you to remove those lines for you Okay, so that's my grey done for now. I'm now going to start off with some other colours. I'm going to do my greens first. And I'm going with two colours because I don't really want lots and lots of shading. And I want to get it done as quickly as I can, really, because it's going to help me to sort out what I'm doing. So I'm just sort of going over it as quickly as I can to get my colours where I think I want them. So I've got some real bright green here that I'm using. Um, and I will probably go in with a slightly darker green to help leave it up and give me a sense of, um, sort of colour and form in what I'm doing. Here's my darker green. And I'm just going to put, oops, wrong end, a little bit long here to darken that up. Give it a bit of shade, a bit in these to help. Okay. So that's what I'm doing with the greens. Now I'm going to go in, um, I've got an ivory here for my tusks because it just takes the whiteness off it. And if I happen to have gone in there with my colouring when I was doing grey, I've gone over my lines, by putting a, a ivory in there, I can either, I can move any ink that's in the wrong place because I'm pushing it out with a new colour. But I can also give them a bit of a, a sense of what they are. Right, so the green turquoise colour now. So I'm going to just put knit this down as much as I can. Okay, I'm just using pens to put the edges in and colouring in. Give myself a bit of a tony areas. I'm going with the darker colour now to give me some um, brighter bits that I'm just sort of going with to help it not really doing a lot of blending on this because I don't really want it all blending out as such. What I'm looking for is um, on the mandala side of it, it's just to give it a bit of a tone on tone really, to make it feel like it's doing something with it all and it's all sort of carrying on and blending in quite nicely. I'm going to go in with the turkey tones now. Okay, so I'm just going to put the light one in first. Look, it's going to be a little bit brighter. Okay, I think it's one of those stamps that you can mess around with and you can be colouring for a very long time because you're not sure which ones you're going to do what with. So, because it does such a lot of different tones and there's so much there available for you to just play with. So you're going to do... Um, a lot no, it's just nice to have a bit of a fiddle and I'm going to be treating this like it's a postcard really so not really as 
um, a harder approach of thinking. It's going to look. My my aim is that it's going to be more like um, a card topper. So we shall see how we go. Right, that will do for my colouring now. My right, next stop is blending. Now I'm going to blend around my elephant um, with um, a distress ink. For this one, I'm going to be using this corduroy because I think it's a really good colour um, for the ageing. The brand is right, works really well. And I'm going to do some stamping as well. But the stamping I'm going to be doing is actually um, not from the stamp set. It's what I call they what I call a worker stamp. We get we often get a pack of stamps and it's got something on it that you're not sure about. So on this one, on the elephant, you get these bubbles. No, well, I'm not going to really use them probably with my elephant, but they're going to make really good bubbles on circles for something else that I want to do. So I keep those separately to the stamps to keep them with what I call my work stamps, basically. So stamps that will aren't very big, but they will fit in. Oh, I forgot to do something with everything else. Right, so I want to make it look like an old postcard. I'm going to put some creases in it before I do my blending. I forgot. Okay. The other thing you will notice is that alcohol inks bleed through the back. That's quite normal. So don't worry about it. It's quite a normal thing to happen. Um, it's what, why you shouldn't colour with alcohol inks onto a really nice posh dining table because it will mark it and you will end up with no varnish left on it. It will take it all off for you. So always put something underneath it if you're on a nice surface when you're colouring, so I tend to use a, um, it's everything's on a glass mat because it's just a bit safer really um, but it's up to you what you use um, to colour on, I mean, you can use a piece of paper or you can use a, a, any other sort of craft mat but you don't want to be going directly onto a polished surface because otherwise you're going to take all your varnish off there we go, right, some brown in it, that's got me some ageing on it, which is looking quite good. So now I'm a worker stamps. Right, first one I've got, it looks like, um, it's a strange looking little stamp, because you can see, can't really see much of it, but it's actually got, it looks like, you know when the paper goes old and you get little marks on it, that's what this sort of does. So I'll just show you, I'm going to stamp it on with a little bit of distress ink, I'm just going to do different um, layers and different amounts but it gives you that sort of fogging feel that's what they call it it's fogging 